Hey everyone, Danny, the do-it-yourself guy here again for another appliance repair. It's with my dishwasher. It just stopped um, working in the middle of a cycle. The power was off. There's no lights coming on. So I suspect it's a fuse that's blown. So first thing to do is check the breakers and see if that didn't trip the, the breakers to this dishwasher. I checked mine and it did not trip the breakers. So that's not the cause of the problem. The other thing is I went ahead and, and cleaned out the dishwasher anyways. It was time to clean that out. You should clean it about two to three months and just to maintain it. So when I cleaned it out, and you'll see it on the video, but I cleaned it out, I, I found some pistachio uh, shells and I found some broken plastic forks. Those are common things that will just kind of get the grinder all stuck so it's best to clean that out and make sure you do that on a regular basis so let's go ahead and diagnose the the dishwasher and see what's wrong with it all right so i'm just gonna vacuum this with uh, dry vac these are really handy to have for general purpose home home situations so i'm just gonna dry vac and check out all the water that's remaining in the bottom there so i'm gonna disassemble this uh this washer and uh, basically you take a pair of n long nose pliers, hold the center, and turn it counterclockwise, the wheel. And that, that just comes out. So once you get the water sprayer off, you're going to need to take out, unscrew these, these screws, four of them. There's three in the outside and then there's one underneath this this bar here and you're going to need torque screws so they're the star the star kind torque bit and so you just unscrew these then you have to pop out these arms some of them come out easily there are these clips on the side these metal clips on the side if you if it's hard to get out just take a screwdriver and just pry it open and that comes out and there's one in the, the top part as well. Yeah, that comes off and then you just lift and rotate clockwise and that comes off this arm comes off and then there it'll reveal the, the hidden screw that's underneath that so you unscrew that okay take this center piece now there's a there's a rubber piece sometimes when you take this off this will come off so just try to leave it in place there that's the center piece, take it off. Okay, now you'll be able to lift this filter off. Now you can clean this, you know, a lot of guck in here, but you can clean this and this comes off, the center piece comes off, All right? Just wash it, and clean it out. Now I'm gonna just gonna, again, dry vac the inside here just to drain it. So you gotta see what I found in here. These are pistachio shells that people just didn't rinse off and will not grind through the grinder. Now there is another screw that, that uses a Torx screw as well, but it's a, a smaller Torx screw. So I'm just gonna sw switch over, but it's to take out the covering for the grinder here. This just after you unscrew that this just pops out all right and look what I found I don't know how this got in there but it's a, a plastic piece this disposable plastic fork and uh, I see a few of them in there so I'm gonna clean that out all right so once you've cleaned this out you can put it all together that this just lines up 
to the shape of the inside here and that just pops back in. Let's clean that out. Put this back in, line it up. All right. And then you put the center piece. Remember, there's this rubber, rubber washer here. Make sure that's on, okay? And um, so one of the things is you have to press, press down initially, okay? Press it nice and snug so it won't move. Screw in the hidden, hidden screw there. And then you put the back arm back on. Again, put it on an angle, push down, and then turn counterclockwise. Right? Clip back the the supports at the top there as well. All right, and then you screw back the other screws. Okay, now when you put this back on, you make sure you lift this up first. Okay, make sure you lift it up center so now it's spinning. You have to press down on it to get the arm in. So once it's in, you push it up, now it's freely rotating. And you put back the wheel. Again, nose pliers, hold it in place, turn it clockwise. A little tight there. Now it's spinning freely. So we're gonna have to open this front panel um, up. So go ahead and unscrew all the screws on the side. Mine is a, a solid front face. Some units have this top piece separate. So in some units you just have to uh, unscrew the top screws and that the front So we're going to open up the front panel to get access to the motherboard. So unscrew all these side screws with, uh, with your torque screws. In some units, I find that you just have to unscrew the top pieces, the top screws, and that will reveal the control panel. And since mine is a solid face, solid front, I have to unscrew all of it. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew all these screws. So just having a look at the, the control panel here, I've seen some of the wires are just a little bit burnt on the outside. They're not really damaged, they're just burnt on the outside. So there must have been an overheating to the fuse over here and that caused the fuse to blow. I've gone ahead and put some electrical tape on some of the burnt spots here. So just make sure that that's protected. There's no wires that have been exposed, so that's good. I do suspect that it is a fuse that's been blown. So one of the things that uh, you can do is just go and test this to make sure that the fuse is the one that, that was the problem. Luckily, there's no burn marks on the motherboard, so that's good, or else we would have had to replace the motherboard. These, this is where the fuse is. There's a clip that comes off here. or just put that up. I have one of these, these wires here that just basically it's convenient that you place it, it clips on to either side of these connectors. So to test the fuse, I'm just gonna take the holder off so I can access the fuse better. And that just clips off. Make sure you don't break the clip. Just put that to the side and so here's the here's the fuse and to test this so I'm gonna jump either side of the fuse so clip that on 
all right? So that's gonna allow the current to go bypass the fuse. So if the unit turns on, then we know that the fuse was blown. So I'm gonna go and turn on the power. So let's test this out and make sure that's the cause of the problem. All right, the power is on and as you can tell, the lights are on, so it was the fuse. So now that you know that the fuse is blown, you just disconnect the test cable, the jumper cable. All right, so go ahead and take out the fuse. So there's a few options for fuse. Fuses for these dishwashers. Mine's a circular fuse. I've matched mine on Amazon, so I've looked for mine. Just look up dishwasher fuse. You'll see Whirlpool, Kenmore, and other brands there. And just look for the type that matches your fuse. So I've gone ahead and ordered my replacement fuse from Amazon. It took about a week to order it. This is actually a Whirlpool fuse, so but it matches with my KitchenAid fuse. So let's open this up. So it comes with some twisty ties. the power cable. I don't really need the power cable here because my power cable is intact, but they give it, they come with the power cable. So I'm gonna take off the fuse part of this. All right, so here's my fuse. Just make sure that it matches with the old one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just connect, connect it back in. Then put the holder back in. Pop it in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and test this to make sure it is working. I connected the, turned on the, pow the power to the breakers and all the lights are flashing again. Success. So now that you've confirmed that the fuse is working, I'm just gonna put it all back together. So we turned the so turn the power back on. All the lights are on again. So I'm just going to go ahead and just run through a cycle. Now this is a this was a pretty straightforward fix, but again, if you're not comfortable with uh, with working with electricity, I would suggest calling in an electrician or a dishwasher repair uh, a repair person. Now dishwasher repair person, it's gonna cost you about $120, $100 to come in and just even diagnose the problem. But if it is a fuse problem, then it is a pretty straightforward repair if you're comfortable working around with electricity. Just make sure, again, you turn off all the power um, to the breakers, make sure there's no electricity running in here. And I would just go ahead, before you start anything, clean out the dishwasher, good time to to do a maintenance anyways, clean out the dishwasher, take out all the water so you're prepared to repair the unit. So I ordered my fuse on Amazon. Hopefully with your fuse, it is available on Amazon. It was about $50 and it took me about 10, 15 minutes to kind of repair everything. That's it for now, and if you like this video and it was helpful, please subscribe or like the video. 
and let me hear your comments. If you have any issues, let me know and stay tuned for my next do-it-yourself project.